Welcome class to anatomy, human anatomy. If you grow to appreciate human anatomy, you will find it fascinating. There is nothing more fantastic than the human anatomy, how we are built, how we are put together. If you are going into any healthcare profession, it is human anatomy that is going to be your foundation. You have to know anatomy. It all starts with anatomy. Anatomy rocks. I will be using a lot of pictures from this marvelous author, Alex Gray. You can see all his work at alexgray.com. He's a, he does some of the most marvelous, beautiful anatomy drawings I've ever seen. And he studied anatomy. He worked with cadavers. So beautiful, beautiful spiritual drawings of anatomy. So you're taking anatomy. What is anatomy? Versus what is physiology? We always hear A and P, anatomy and physiology. There's some um, overlapping with them, but let's try to figure out what makes them different. Anatomy is the structure, the form, how things are built, how things are put together. And physiology is the study of function, how things work. So if you see any calcium ions, we are not going to be talking about calcium ions and membrane potentials, action potentials in anatomy. This is physio, how it works. This is anatomy how things are built. So we will be studying this. What you need to remember is it is the anatomy, the way it is built, that will determine its function, its physio. I hear all the time from physiology teachers Oh my God, anatomy is so boring. You are just memorizing a bunch of stuff. Well, number one, you're memorizing, you're memorizing words, terms, yes, because you are learning a language. And that is the language you are going to use to communicate with other healthcare professionals. If you don't know anatomy, you cannot communicate with other healthcare professionals. And I always tell the physio people, remember, form determines function. Basically, anatomy is determining your physio. So, who's your daddy physio? Anyway, let's look at this simple anatomy. Here are some, a spoon and a fork. They are built very very alike, right? But their function is different, so they are going to be built a little bit different. If you want to eat um, soup, you're probably not going to build an instrument like this to eat soup. You will build this to eat your soup. Always remember, Form determines function. You will see that throughout anatomy, and you need to understand it. Even if it's big pieces of anatomy or the microscopic anatomy, the way it is built is going to determine its function. That is how anatomy and physio intertwine. So, just to get started with this boring stuff, we'll go through it because you have to know it. 
there are what they call six levels of organization of the human body. You need to know these. Um, some students write them down on a card, an index card, or if you can just remember them because they build upon each other. We are going to start with chemicals and molecules. So some common chemical elements that we are going to see throughout um, anatomy and physio is going to be hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen. Those are the biggies. They are going to combine to form molecules, H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen, or O2, regular old oxygen. And then we're going to build macromolecules. We're going, out of all these, we're going to form lipids and proteins and, oops, I got proteins twice. I should have put carbohydrates, lipids, carbohydrates, RNA, DNA. These are not living. Remember, these are not living. And we are going to take our molecules and our macromolecules and we are going to build a cell. So with all this stuff, we are going to build a cell and a cell is the basic unit of life. That is biology's building blocks. These are alive, these divide. So cells. So here they're showing you we're taking these chemicals and molecules to build one smooth muscle cell. So this is one smooth muscle cell. We are going to take this smooth muscle cell and we're going to combine it with other smooth muscle cells and we're going to form a tissue. Basically tissues are groups of like cells the like cells here are smooth muscle cells. They are coming together to perform a specific function. Now, we have more than smooth muscle tissue. We have other types of tissue in our body, but we're just going with this one for demonstration purposes. So we're taking our, our like cells and we're going to put them together to form a tissue. So now we have a big collection of smooth muscle tissue and we're going to combine different tissue types together, two or more tissue types, and they're going to form a, an organ. So here we have the stomach. Now the stomach is formed from smooth muscle tissue and it's got other tissue types that we're going to talk about later that are going to make this whole organ, and here it is the structure. This is an organ made up of more than two or more tissue types. Now we are going to combine organs together that have similar functions and make an organ system. So the stomach, it belongs to the digestive system. There are multiple organs in the digestive system beside the stomach. We have the liver, um, the small intestines, the large intestines. There's, there's multiple organs that are coming together for a specific function and they are ma now making an organ system. In our bodies, we have 11 organ systems and we'll talk about those shortly. All 11 organ systems are going to combine, come together to form one integrated unit, one organism, which is you, and this is you. You're formed from this six basic levels of organization of the human body. Not too hard to follow this, just make sure you understand this. Now we're, we're learning anatomy and there's different types of anatomy. We'll just go over them briefly. First one, gross anatomy. Gross is not gross like yucky. Gross means huge, large. You can see, if it's gross anatomy, you can see the anatomy with your naked eye. 
you don't need a microscope to see it. Here we have the brain. You can see the brain. Here we have the skeleton and all the bones. You can see them. Here we have our lungs, our heart, some blood vessels. You can see this, the stomach. This is gross anatomy versus microscopic anatomy. Microscopic. You need a microscope to see it. It is so small. And we're going to be covering microscopic anatomy, a.k.a. our histology. We'll be starting histology, the study of tissue, in our next class session. session. So this is microscopic anatomy, basically our histology, the study of tissue. So here, you're going to, if you were in the classroom, you'd be spending a lot of time looking at slides under the microscope. So that was microscopic anatomy, AKA our histology. Then there's regional anatomy. Now in regional anatomy, the body is sectioned into different regions. You can have the head region, neck region, the thoracic region, the abdominal region, the upper limb, the lower limbs. Those are all huge regions. If you were in medical school and you were dissecting a cadaver, you would dissect the cadaver in regions. Say you start in the head. You would just work on the head. You would remove the skin, go down and look at the muscles. Then you'd go down and look at the nerves, the blood vessels, the brain, anything that's contained in the head, you would, you would work on it and learn all those structures. But that is not how we are going to be approaching anatomy in this class. We are going to be utilizing systemic anatomy, where you're going to look at your 11 organ systems. Remember, we talked about the 11 organ systems that come together to form you. So we have the integumentary system, which basically is your skin and associated structures of the skin, skeletal system, muscular system, nervous system, endocrine system, cardiovascular system, lymphatic system, respiratory system, digestive system, urinary system, and the reproductive system. You, we are going to go through all these different systems in this course. A good way to remember all these systems is with this little phrase, Murders Inc. INC. Muscular, urinary, respiratory, digestive, endocrine, reproductive, skeleton, integumentary, nervous, and cardiovascular, which we're going to include the lymphatic system with the cardiovascular system. Easy way to remember your different systems, your 11 different systems. We will be starting with your integumentary system next, next week. So what a lot of students have trouble with is the language of anatomy, basically memorizing all those words. But remember, you are learning a new language. If you were learning French, or Spanish. You have to learn the language. You have to know how to pronounce the words. You have to understand what the words mean. That's what you're going to be doing in anatomy. And at first it seems overwhelming and pretty soon you start saying the same words over and over again and you have to say them out loud. That's the only way you're going to feel comfortable with these words is by saying these words out loud. Almost all anatomical terms are going to have a prefix, something that comes before the root word or the core meaning of the word. The root word, that is the core meaning. That is telling you what you are talking about and the suffix comes at the end of the word. 
This sounds daunting, but it's not. Let's have a look at some common prefixes. Now, these prefixes were, I'm just going to lay them out there for you. What most students do is write these down on an index card and memorize them. Anti, this is a prefix. It, be, it comes before a root word. Anti, if it, anti means before, in front of, in front of whatever the root word is. Indo, within, inside. Exo, outside. Epi, upon, over, on top of. Hypo, below. Macro, large. Micro, small. Para is beside versus peri, which is around. Supra is above, superior. These are common prefixes. Here's some common root words, and you'll see more of these today too. Bio, you all know that. Bio equals life. Brachy. Brachy is, refers to the arm. Cardi, heart, cervic, neck, crany, the skull, cubit is the elbow, sight, C-Y-T-E, the cell, a cell, gast is stomach. Now I use these combining valves because a lot of times when you're combining other root words, you're going to have to put a combining valve between them. So I just kind of put them in there. Most combining valves are going to be the letter O. Remember what valves are? A, E, I, O, and U. Now our suffixes. Every root word will have, every root word will have a suffix. Not all root words will have a prefix. These a C A L A R I C A R Y. All these suffixes mean the same thing. And you'll see these today when we go over some regional terms. They all mean pertaining to. They make the root word an adjective. Remember, adjective is describing something. This will make a little more sense when we get through this, this lesson. If the suffix ends in U-M, it makes that root word a noun. And it makes that noun singular. Here's some other suffixes. Ectomy, surgical removal, itis, inflammation. Ology, study of. So let's get some examples. When you're looking at any of these words, kind of work from back, back to forward. So this word is anti breaky um. Anti breaky um. Um, it's telling us, here's the suffix. This is a noun. What, what is it talking about? What is the root word? The root word is brachy. That is the arm. And specifically, the, so this is the arm. And then we have this anti in front of it. Anti means before, in front of. So this is in front of the arm. This is basically the forearm. So this is your forearm versus antibrachial, antibrachial region, antibrachial, all. It means pertaining to. It makes the word, the root word, an adjective. What the heck does that mean? If you read this word, you cannot just say antibrachial. This is an adjective. You can say antibrachial region. Region is the noun. Which, what region? The antibrachial region. 
Here we have brachium. Now we have, it's back to a noun. This is a noun and it is the upper arm versus brachial, A-L again, it's an adjective, brachial artery. It's an artery in the upper arm. What, what's the noun? The noun is artery. What kind of artery? The brachial artery. It is the artery found in the upper arm. Here we have O-L-G-Y, biology, the study, the study of life. Cardiology, study of the heart. Gastritis, inflammation of the stomach. So these are just some examples. Um, on your first exam, I will give you a word and you will have to break it down into its prefix, root word, and suffix and tell me what it means. So starting with the language of anatomy, we have to be very clear to avoid confusion when we are talking about certain parts of the body. We need to be exact, exact in the location we are talking about. So, we are always going to be assuming that the human body is in this position when we reference it. This is called the anatomical position. If you can, stand up, get in the anatomical position, feel it, see what it feels like, so you will never forget what the anatomical position is. You are standing upright. You are facing forward. Your arms are at your side. Your palms are facing forward, not backwards. Your palms are facing forward. Your feet are flat on the ground and they are directed forward. So we have our anatomical position here and here's our Mr. Skeleton in the anatomical position. So next we are going to do regional names. Make sure you have your lab worksheets. They're on your class website. Sweet, Weebly Sweet Anatomy, Weebly Sweet Anatomy, type it in. You will find my website. Go to the Introduction to Anatomy, download your lab guides, your lecture notes, and your worksheets. You should have those with you when you're doing any of my videos because I'm always going through those lab worksheets with you. So this is on your lab guide. These are the regional terms that you have to know to start with. This is just the big, big picture. These are big regional areas on your body. Uh, I think, let's see, there are 39 on your lab guide. So we're going to go through all 39. Practice them, say them out loud. Get your worksheet while I am going through this with you so you can follow along and you have your unlabeled guy. It's a different one than this, but it'll work for you. You're going to circle the region and put a number by it. Do not have, like, we'll start with this one, cephalic. Cephalic is the entire head. So what you should do is just get a pencil, circle the entire head, and put 
a number one by it. Do not write cephalic, just put number one by it. So when you want to test yourself, you can just put number one. Okay, it's the head circled. It's labeled number one. What is it? It is cephalic. This is the cephalic region. Remember, I see. It's one of these pertaining to. It's an adjective. So this is the cephalic region. That's why they call them regional names. This is the entire head region versus cranial. Now, cranial is the top part of the skull that is actually covering your brain. So this top part of your head is the cranial region versus cranium. What's um mean? It means it's a noun. The cranium is that this structure that is covering um, your brain. The frontal region, the frontal region right here. You've heard of frontal headaches. What kind of headache? A frontal headache. It ends in AL, means it's an adjective. Orbital region. So we are looking at the eye. So you would circle the eye and put another a number four by it. Orbital region. Nasal region. Real easy. That's the nose region. Nasal nose drops. You've heard of those. Oral region. Oral is the mouth. Buckle. The Buckle region is the cheek region, right in through here, the cheek region, cervical region, the neck region, right here, neck region. You've all heard of cervical collars, cervical, A-L, cervical means it's an adjective, cervical collar. So a cervical collar, the noun is collar. Cervical is the adjective. A chromial region, right here. This is the upper shoulder region right here, the chromial region right here. There's a bone part of the chromium of one of your bones that's right here. So the chromial region. The thoracic region is this whole entire upper chest region. It's between the neck and the abdominal region. There's going to be a muscle here, the diaphragm. This diaphragm is separating the thoracic region from the abdominal region. So this is the entire thoracic region. Within the thoracic region, we are going to have the sternal region. This is where the sternum is. Sternal region versus sternum. This is the sternum. This is the sternal region. Pectoral region. Here's your pecs. Pectoralis major. So these are the pecs. This is the chest region. The pectoral region. And then we're coming to the abdominal region. This is all the abdominal region here below the thoracic region. And remember, this line is showing you this where the diaphragm would be, that big muscle that's separating the, the thoracic region from the abdominal region. And the last one we have on this page is the pelvic region. Now, you have hip bones. If you put your hands on your hips, you can feel those hip bones sticking out right here on both sides. Those are your hip bones. And that is where you're going to have your pelvic region, right in through here. This whole area is the pelvic region. So let's go to the next page. This is 15, and I think the next page I have... 16.
the pubic region. Now, this is the pelvic region, and then the pubic region. If you have pubic hair, you are in the pubic region. There's actually a bone here called the pubis. It's the pubic bone. But for you guys, if you got pubic hair, that is in the pubic region. There you go. Pubic. I see. It's an adjective. Pubic hair. What kind of hair? Pubic hair. Um, inguinal region. So a lot of people have problems figuring out what the inguinal region is. The inguinal region is this area, the groin. That's basically where the leg is attached to the torso here. The inguinal region right here. There's something called inguinal hernias. Remember, inguinal means it's an adjective. Inguinal hernia, that would be the noun is the is a hernia. What kind of hernia? An inguinal hernia. Doo -doo. Axillary region. That is in the armpit, in the axilla. Axillary region. You do axillary a r y axillary a r y makes it an adjective the axillary region axillary temperatures if you're doing an axillary temperature temperature is the noun what kind of temperature an axillary temperature versus a rectal a rectal temperature um, brachial we've already learned brachial the brachial region this is the upper arm region. So in here, it's just showing you the blue. That is the brachial region. Remember, this is the chromial region right here. And then we have the anti-cubital. Anti-cubital. Anti means in front of. And cubital means elbow. So this is the area in front of the elbow. So we're your elbow bends right in through here. This is the anti-cubital region. Anti-brachial, we already learned that. That is the forearm right here. Versus the wrist region down here. This is the carpal region. You've Most of you probably heard of carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal, it's an adjective. This is the carpal region, the wrist region. Digital. These are your digits, your fingers. Palmer. This is the palmer part of your hand, where your palms are. Now we're going into the leg, the femoral region. Femoral region, this is... This is the where um, the upper thigh. We have a bone here called the femur, the biggest bone in your bo body that is right in here. So this is the femoral region, the upper thigh, well the thigh, and the patella region. The patella is a bone right here. This is your kneecap. So this is the patella region right here. The tarsal. Tarsal is the ankle, ankle region. Pedal is the entire foot, the entire foot. Um, pedal, think of it like, how do you remember? It's the foot, put the pedal to the metal, you're pushing down with your foot. Or if you get a pedicure, pedi, pedi means foot. Pedicure, getting your toes done on your foot. So pedal is the foot region. And then we're going to come to this region, the dors dorsal region, which is the top of the foot right here. Are most places you'll just see it called the dorsum. It's a noun, the dorsum. This is the dorsum of the foot, the top of the foot.
now we're going to go to the behind region. Look in the back. These are the regions that are seen on the back side, or the dorsal side of your figure. We haven't talked about that word yet, but we will shortly. So this is the posterior part of your body. The occipital region. The occipital region, back in here, it's in the back of the head right here. We have a bone here called the occipital bone. That's back in here. The vertebral region. This is where your spine is. Your vertebral column runs all the way down here. This is the vertebral region. The lumbar region. This is the lower back. We have this part of the um, spine is called the lumbar region of the spine. So this whole part here is the lumbar region down here. The lower back. The sacral region. Now, the sacral region is this little triangular region in between the buttocks right here. There's a bone called the sacrum that is right in here. So the sacral region. The gluteal region right here and here. The glutes, the gluteal region. The perineal region, you can't see it on the sky. The perineal region is the area between the anus and going forward into the external genitalia. A lot of you guys just call it the taint, but it's called the perineal region, aka the perineum, which would make it a noun. Pop, oops, I didn't do the dorsum. The dorsum of the hand. This is the back of the hand. So this is the dorsum of the hand, the back of the hand. Remember the dorsum of the foot was on top of the foot. Popliteal region. So the popliteal region is this region behind the knees. Um, the popliteal region, A-L meaning it's an adjective. We're going to find the popliteal artery, popliteal vein are in here, popliteal region. The next region is the calcaneal region. That is the heel. So we have a big bone here, bone called the calcaneus. So this is the calcaneal region, the heel of your foot. And then the last one is the plantar region. The plantar region is the bottom of the foot. Can't see it here. It's the sole of the foot. Some of you might have heard of plantar warts. Remember AR? AR makes it an adjective. What kind of warts? Plantar warts. And I think that's it. Um, for this video, we've already gone over our 30 minutes that I want to keep it down to. So uh, lots of stuff to go over. Work on your worksheets. Get all this down before you go on to the next video. Make sure you understand it. You will be quizzed on all the material for the introduction to anatomy on the second day of class. So lots to go over this first introduction, and we're only like one third of the way through. So I'll see you on Intro to Anatomy, Part 2.